What's going on guys? Bangle again here, coming back at you with another video. As you just saw, hopefully, either yesterday or the day before maybe, or somewhere in that time, maybe if you're watching it months down the line, welcome, appreciate having you here. We went 8-4 and four. overall, our first season in the SEC. Our target wins per year is now up to 8. 10-3 last year as we won the Sun Belt, and we obviously did not win the SEC this year. We finished fourth, I believe, and we capped it off with another bowl victory, our second. We are currently 28 and 21 all time. 0 and 2 versus rivals. That is 0 and 2 against Georgia Tech. They likely will be on the schedule for season number five. And we are negative all time versus top 25 teams. I hope to write that and get us above 500 this year. 2 and 0 in bowls is good, but uh, I am ready for the coaching carousel. Are we having anyone new coming in? Nope. Uh, we are offering, or we're getting offered the job at Minnesota and at Utah, but uh, I'm gonna stay at Ozark. I think obviously that shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone. Now to the super sad part, where uh, unfortunately we do have to say goodbye to players that meant so much for Ozark over the last four years. Devin White is declaring. Uh, no, you aren't. Persuasion chance is very high, and I think we'll, we will be able to persuade Devin White. It's not even just because the persuasion chance is very high. Um, I really do believe that uh, he's going to be a first-round pick next year. So, Devin White is staying coming back to Ozark. Yeah, don't you're not declaring. Shut up. We do however have to say goodbye to Colby Spencer, LaRue Schaefer who never played. Kingsley Duckett our starting right tackle, I believe. Jake Rodriguez who was so awesome these past 4 years as a starting tight end all 4 seasons at Ozark State. Devin Robeson is leaving. Freddie Stovall who's made some big plays is leaving. Jeremy Chance a backup running back this last season. Deontay McKeon is a senior. That's right. Also losing our starting left guard, Jeff McGrew. And you, what do you say about Deontay McKeon? Kind of an underperformer. These, uh, these last seasons at Ozark State, he started, I believe, two of them. Uh, never really played much. But in this last season, boy, did he come on strong. Got to take your hat off, tip your cap to him. Tavarius Skinner, backup middle linebacker in a lot of packages. He is leaving. Colt 45. Say goodbye to Colt Nash, a fan favorite. Chris Chase is also leaving. He was a senior. Dominic Hand at left tackle. Josiah Howard. He actually started, I believe, at right tackle. Jack Ham, our starting center. Corey Tidwell, our starting right guard. Ron Norman. You guys remember him from the first few episodes returning kicks with like 70 speed. Of course, Roland Francisco. Hunter Register was a senior. That's right. Yeah, he transferred over as a, uh, I believe as a uh, as a sophomore, and he played three seasons with us. So, man, these are some pretty big losses. I forgot about Hunter Register. I forgot about a lot of these guys last season, but it's good to retain Devin White. And uh, Colby Spencer, you know, he was awesome for us. Injury prone early on in season two and season three for us, but what a player overall. And uh, we'll see if anyone is going to transfer in for season six. Obviously, they're going to have to sit out of here. Lawrence Hicks, a 67 overall freshman out of Syracuse. We will allow it. Welcome. Now let's go to recruiting. A very, very big part of this offseason is going to be landing some of these players. That goes without saying, though, of course. We are in recruiting battles with these five players. Who do I want the most here? It's almost like, who do I want the least? I want all of these players badly. I don't know if we'll be able to swing it. We're going to have 15,000 points, though, to try and get these guys. Indiana is taking the lead on Adam Rogers. We are in the lead on Shedrick Williams. We are behind on Matt Richardson. Todd Hawkins, only behind by 70. Joey Ransom, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get him. I really like his tackling. He's a, he's a good player. Don't really care about too many guys here at the bottom. Kevin Baker would be really nice to get, to be fair. John Fernandez, we're not getting. 
Marcus Schmidt, I doubt we're getting, and then Steve Castillo. I'm not really worried about these guys at the bottom. I need these guys at the top. Let's see, who's better? Both these guys are very comparable. I really would like to get both. But we're, we can't get everyone. That's... Decisions, decisions. All right, I'm giving up on everybody but Todd Hawkins, Matt Richardson, Shedrick Williams, and Adam Rogers. This is what we're doing. All right, hopefully we can land these guys. What a recruiting class for us. That's fantastic. I know we didn't get Joey Ransom. That's all right. We killed it. We killed it. That's unbelievable. We got Marcus Schmidt. Who I didn't, we, we didn't even go for him. Adam Rogers, Matt Richardson, Todd Hawkins, Shedrick Williams, Brian Swain, Kevin Baker, Marlon Harris. I don't even know who you are. Wow, usually I like to show it in a in the other screen. I think it looks nicer with the logos, but wow. I've never seen that much yellow before. Had to show it here. A top 10 class overall. Oh, uh, we killed it. Is there no ESPN here? I like to see where our class ranks in the entire nation. I guess I'm going to have to wait on that. But uh, let's go into signing signing day. I usually like to show you guys from here. It just looks so nice with the logos. We lost big time on Steve Castillo. I didn't go after him, but we got Adam Rogers. We barely got Matt Richardson by 60. Todd Hawkins, we got by a lot. Marlon Harris, we got by a lot. Are you good at anything? I guess I can't check from here. That's right. Um, Jay Ross is going to go to LSU. Willie Johnson. We got Kevin Baker, the touchdown maker, by... A lot. I didn't even go after him, but we were very lucky to sign him. John Fernandez, we lost out on by a lot, but I didn't go after him. And then Marcus Schmidt by 35 points. Did they just not try to get him? We were we put in way too much to Shedrick Williams, apparently, but I really wanted this player. Joey Ransom lost out on by a lot, but again, I didn't go after him. I really wanted to get him, but I mean, I commit to those other guys. What a class we had. Fantastic stuff. Very, very happy. Easily our best class ever. Position changes is going to be fun. I need to see where some of these athletes go. I'd like to play some of them on the offensive line. I think two could be offensive line. Well, one for sure. I just need these guys to fit. All right, we got a bunch of athletes. Like, so many athletes. A bunch of really high overalls. The first one I want to check is Gerard Owens. What is your run block? I need his run block to be high and pass block, obviously. Tell me he has the ability to play offensive line. Oh my God, yes. Yes, it pays off. So I guess we're gonna make him a tackle. He could play center. Let's check about, let's check what we have right now. So Todd Hawkins is gonna go up to like a 78, right? Donald Hall is going to go up to an 80, we'll say. We're going to just give plus four. We don't need a center. Kevin Washington will be an 83, 84. We need a right guard. We And a right tackle. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Antonio Madison is going to play... What's your speed? 62? What's the speed of this athlete? Gerard Owens. 68? Is it both 68? I think it might have been. 62. All right, so Antonio Madison is going to play right tackle. And um, we are going to play that athlete at right guard. And he's probably going to start year one. Actually, we don't have to. We could redshirt this dude. So what would happen in that, in that case is we have our starting left tackle. We have our starting left guard. We have our starting center. Mike McKenzie's here. Mike McKenzie's going to play right guard. Right? I think that's going to work out best. Oh, and he has 71 speed. Yeah. He's only a 71 overall. Um, right guard, but that's fine. I guess he's probably going to start at that spot. I guess. Yeah, we'll keep him there. Because um, he'll get boosted over Sherrod Owens. Honestly, Jeremy Douglas is going to get the biggest boost. I'm going to play him at right guard because he's the oldest. Which means that uh, Mike McKenzie is going to move. Hold on, who's a senior here? I know I'm spending a lot of time worrying about the offensive line, but it really, really matters. We have a really young, um, we have a really young bunch now. Everyone's not a senior, so we're gonna redshirt Gerard Owens. 
He's a 74 overall tight end. That's crazy. He'd be a run blocker only. We're going to play him. Um, we'll just play him at center for now. Even though he won't ever play. So we have our starting right guard. It's Jeremy Douglas. Mike McKenzie. I mean, what do we do here? Mike McKenzie. I thought he was going to be someone that played. But I don't think so. We're going to have Mike McKenzie play left tackle. That's what's going to happen. And then that'll give us the opportunity to redshirt Todd Hawkins. Who we got. And we'll also redshirt Gerard Owens. All right. Took me long enough to make that decision. But the offensive line is set now. Joel Carter. Is this who I wanted to play tight end? I think it is. He looks like he could be a sick running back. Oh my god. He looks like he could be a sick tight end though. What's your run block? Oh my god. This is a, this is a monster tight end, Joel Carter. Check out his overall. 75. All right. You know, not terrible. 73. Fullback. 77. Halfback. 79 wide receiver, but 75 tight end. We need tight ends. He probably will start year one. Joel Carter. Courtney Hargrove. Quarterback, it looks like. Yeah, quarterback. Maybe. Yeah, he is the quarterback of the bunch for sure. Marcus Schmidt. Marcus? No, Marcus Schmidt. Schmidt. That is a tough name for me to say for whatever reason. He is a wide receiver, probably. He's got really good cover skills, though. 84 press. I don't want to. I don't want to waste that. What do we have at cornerback? Not a whole lot of talent here. However, these three guys. Well, not the freshman. We damn. We got a lot of cornerbacks. Adam Jones is going to go up. Willie Mays is going to go up. We're going to have a fine group of cornerbacks. What do you have at receiver? Ooh, we actually do need receivers really badly. Okay, that makes that decision a lot easier. I didn't really recruit a lot of receivers. But Marcus Schmidt, that is a tough name for me to say. Why? Marcus, Mar Marcus Schmidt. God! All right, Keith Powell, what are you? Looks like a running back. Do you have any ability to play defense? No, so he's, he's a running back. That's just what he is. Keith Powell is a running back. How are we looking at running back? Very bad overall. All right, so he'll be able to play running back real easy. And then we won't need a running back next year. Because David Armstrong is also going to play running back. He's an 80 overall. I'm like, yeah, he's a safety. Yeah, give me a break. No. Of course, if you don't remember David Armstrong all season, and I think I'm going to do a better job building up these recruiting storylines. David Armstrong is now the highest overall running back on our team. That won't stay that way, by the way. Because, um... It might. Josh Shelton might not go up higher than an 80. But he has... 90 speed, 90 agility, 92 acceleration, 77 brake tackle, 93 trucking. This is the running back of dreams. And he can catch out of the backfield. That's so good. Willie Parrish is our starter at right outside linebacker. At middle linebacker, we're good with Devin White. At left outside linebacker, we have nothing. Which means, hello, Ernest Tarman. You play linebacker now. And you are actually not bad at all. Ernest Harmon already has 81 speed. He's going to go up above an 80 with this. And his tackling is good. He was an in-the-box safety for us last year. 76 tackle, 87 hit power. Good power and finesse move with good block shed pursuit. 85 zone coverage. This is a fantastic linebacker. Pete Riley is a senior. He's up to an 88 overall. Number 69 with 69 speed, 69 agility. Nice, nice, nice. Kyle Day is still here. He just doesn't go away, does he? So we are set at quarterback. We have Courtney Hargrove, who we, who we uh, recruited. Adam, Adam Rogers, who we recruited. Who do we even go with at quarterback? And Courtney Hargrove is a guy that could move. He's a versatile player that honestly might be best uh, served playing wide receiver, but I don't think so. Chris Porter is a junior this year, so we'll likely have him for the next two, which means these guys are absolutely getting red shirt. Halfback, we are perfect. Fullback, we are fine with Tim O'Brien. Wide receiver, I think we have four really solid ones. Uh, and Marcus Schmidt, obviously, is going to play right away. Joel Carter, we need another tight end. You think Courtney Hargrove can play tight end? He, no, he can't. 
Uh, I really need another tight end, though. We run a lot of three tight end sets sometimes. We don't, we don't have anyone on the entire team that can play tight end, really. Offensive line is set. We'll go over the roster a bit later. I just want to check out the defensive line before we move on. Chris Holmes finally has the opportunity to start, and he's really, really good. He's already an 80, and that's going to go up much higher after this. As you can see, he has 84 hit power, 86 power move, 86 finesse move, 85 block shed, 80 pursuit. It's amazing he didn't start last year because he is really, really good at defensive tackle. Uh, we'll get to it in a minute, actually, but we have Sandoval Slaughter, now a senior, starting at right end, and Shelton Neal, a junior, at right end. He's going to change to um, to left, probably, just for depth purposes. We don't actually have a left end currently, so he's going to work well at that spot. And then at defensive tackle, we have the best defensive tackle combo in the nation, in my opinion, with Daryl Bradford, now a senior, and Albert Johnson. Has he? Is it? Is he really already a junior? That's crazy. I guess we have played two seasons with him, but that is wild. Donnell Mason here is a senior. We will have to recruit pretty heavily on the defensive line this year. That's fine. At the linebacker spots, we're golden. At cornerback, we're going to be fine. And at safety, we have Adam Boyd. And we have Mike Hitman Lee, now a senior. Adam Boyd, 90 speed. He's going to go up even higher, too. Are you good, though? 82 zone coverage. 76 man. What's your hit power? 64. Do I have a cornerback that would be better suited to play safety on my team? Adam Jones has 94 speed. What's your hit power? 69. Nice. Good start. Only 49 block shed is really bad. Looks like Shedrick Williams honestly could play safety. Um, Adam Jones might be a better safety. Very slightly. Shedrick Williams is definitely a better safety. We're going to move him um, for sure. And then we're going to redshirt Matt Richardson and play Adam Jones. That is my plan right now. I know we take a lot of time on this, but I really want you guys to know the exact direction um, I am headed with all these moves and why I'm doing each individual thing that I do. And now my favorite, training results. All right, training results. We're going to go quickly to quarterback. Chris Porter is up to an 89 overall as a junior. 86 speed is going to be fantastic. 84 agility, 88 acceleration. Obviously a big step down from what we were used to with Colby Spencer. Higher awareness, great break tackle. Way better than anything Colby ever had. So I like that. And his throwing stats, 89 throw power. He's got a rocket ish it's all right as a junior and then a 77 throw accuracy could be better but uh it could be a lot worse so he's gonna be mobile but i think we're gonna lean on our running attack a lot this year josh shelton probably gonna be second fiddle 82 break tackle 68 trucking only 87 speed he's gonna play second fiddle to that five star recruit we had that was an athlete that's like i'm a safety and i'm like no you're not he's a running back and he's an 80 overall running back He's going to start. I don't remember his name right now. Tim O'Brien up to a 75 overall. Very good fullback. And then a wide receiver. Rob Gaither up to an 89. Only 85 speed. That doesn't get boosted. Tony Gates up to 95 speed. Omar Williams up to 94 speed. We've got a good bunch of receivers here. Omar Williams up to an 87 now as a junior. Tony Gates up to an 85 as a redshirt sophomore. Rob Gaither enters his final season as an Ozark State outlaw. And let's see here. 87 elusiveness for Omar Williams. I like to see that. He has almost no juke, though. 93 carrying. Rob Gaither has 99 catching. As you can see, there's 90 catching traffic, 90 route running. Omar Williams continues to get just disgustingly good. He was already a god. He'll go up likely to a 91 overall. Maybe a 92 overall when this is all said and done as we have two seasons left with him. At tight end, Mike McQueen goes up to an 82 speed, 70 overall, but it'll be a backup, so I don't really care about that. Mike McKenzie, 75 overall left tackle. Donald Hall, 82 overall left guard. He's up six, and he's only a redshirt freshman. That is so good to see, because he could be in his final season well into the 90s. As a redshirt junior, Kevin Washington, who is a transfer up to an 85 overall. 
Jeremy Douglas, 78 overall at right guard. And Antonio Madison, 78 overall at right tackle. Chris Holmes is up to an 84. Shelton Neal up to an 82 as well, backing him up. Show me some great pass rush moves. 89 power, 89 finesse, 88 block shed. Shelton Neal is a more than capable backup, having pretty much all the exact same stats, just with very slight decreases. They're basically the same player from what it looks like. Shelton Neal just a tad older. Sandoval Slaughter up to an 85. Kind of sucks he only goes up plus four when we saw just a plus six a moment ago. But it seems like most of the defensive line only went up plus four. And in some rare cases, plus five. But Sandoval Slaughter now, 94 hit power, 93 finesse move, 80 block shed. I need to see you getting after the quarterback this year, Sandoval. You are a senior. Need, you need to show out for your senior year uh, on the defensive line. Beautiful. Plus fives and plus sixes all around. Daryl Bradford up to an 87 in the senior season. 84 for Albert Johnson now as a junior. And we'll have to see what they have. Uh, 90 hit power for Daryl Bradford. He also has 90 power move. 97 finesse move for Albert Mason. Oh my god, he also has 85 block shed. I need this defensive line to go into beast mode this year. Left outside linebacker Ernest Harmon is now an 81 as he moves from strong safety to outside linebacker. A transition you see a lot of college players make. 85 block shed, 90 pursuit. 87 zone coverage, 90 press. What a really cool player he is. I didn't see his tackle, though. Oh, yeah, 78. Not too bad. Devin White is up to a 97. 93 speed, 79 strength. High awareness. I don't really care about any of that. Obviously, decent running back moves. He played running back at LSU. Um, it was recruited as one, I should say. 81 jumping is not terrible. 83 tackle, 90 hit power, 85 power move, 99 finesse move. I don't know what to tell you on that one. 89 block shed, 94 pursuit, 89 play rec, 83 man, 88 zone. Although I do user him quite a bit. I mean, can you blame me? Is 93 speed now. Willie Parrish is only a sophomore, 81 overall. Nick Olsen went up a lot too. 86 speed for Willie Parrish. He should have high tackling. That's the big reason why I recruited him. Yep, 78. It's up to 90 hit power, 79 power move, 78 finesse move, 82 block shit, 83 pursuit. Not exactly a cover guy. And then a cornerback, Derek Higgins is up to an 88 overall. Mike Marshall is up to an 84. Uh, Derek Higgins, really, he's just my ideal cornerback. Good speed, good size. Adam Jones is going to play a lot this year. 95 speed. That's really solid. I need to see, like, decent block shit for these guys, or I really would like to. Not great tackling across the board, but we're all right. Block shed at 62. Yeah, Derek Higgins is the ideal cornerback for me. Good pursuit as well. Good play rec. 97 man and 93 zone coverage. Also 85 press. We're going to be running a lot of man this year. Mike Marshall, pretty solid overall. And then a free safety. Adam Boyd goes up to an 81. 91 speed. He also has 94 carrying. Okay, 76 catching, 78 spectacular catch. Good catch in traffic, amazing route running. Oh, he's a wide receiver also, that's why. 68 tackle only, only 54 block shed. Wow, that's brutal. But he has 80 man, 86 zone, 86 play rec. So that is really good. And a strong safety, Mike Lee goes up to a 92 his senior season, 94 speed. His hit power has never been that much. It goes up to a... Uh, 71, but he's been forcing fumbles, man. So uh, I'll take it. 95 man, 92 zone from Mike Marshall. He is just so good. Pete Riley up to a 93. What's your kick power? Where can I bang him from? 95 with 93 accuracy? Hell yeah. And then Kyle Day, I mean, you won't play. That's just, that's my guarantee. My punter is also slippery 69, Pete Riley. Do I have to cut anybody? I have to cut one player. We have a lot of quarterbacks. Um, Not sure where some of them fit on the team. I'm looking at you, Caleb Johnson, but... My decision's easy. Joseph Young, why are you here? What? Is, why are you here? Leonard Floyd. He uh, is not on the Bears anymore. He doesn't play edge anymore. He's also white now. Okay, I can cut some of these defensive tackles like Garrett Gardner. We'll keep Wayne Daniel. 
Just making a little bit of space. I mean, we also don't need uh, Kevin Miller. Yeah, get off the team. And Steve Smith. Fun fact, he also is not retired anymore. Uh, he plays strong safety now instead of wide receiver, and he's also white now. Time for custom conferences. Custom conferences. Do we want to add a team to the SEC? I mean, we could. I mean, UCF is trash in this game, so it's not going to be them. If I don't see someone that makes a lot of sense to add, I'm not going to. Texas would be a very interesting add, but uh, no, they're going to stay in the Big 12. You know who makes a lot of sense, actually, is Georgia Tech. I know they're in the ACC right now, but they're good. They're also a rival of ours, and now it makes it a lot easier, so I don't have to schedule games with them. They're going to slide into the SEC East. Obviously, it makes a lot of sense. Um, they're good in this game, and again, they're a rival. So that is our change. Georgia Tech is now in the SEC. So in the next episode, I am going to set up the recruiting board and determine the schedule. If you want a preview of the schedule, this is the preview of the schedule. Georgia Tech is on it. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, and this is what it looks like right now. Things are subject to change. Texas State, we have a rematch um, of our, or from our Sunbelt days. I don't really know if I want to do that. Also Navy on the schedule. And also Cal. But... We're going to go over that stuff in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. All right, so we're going to do recruiting here in the same offseason. I didn't plan on doing it initially, but we are going to. We'll start by checking out the Spark 100, seeing who the top 100 players are. And there is a tight end, Dwayne White, that has Ozark pretty high on his list. He's an 82 overall. Definitely going to be looking to go after him. I'm not interested in signing a running back. Maybe a wide receiver. Always interested in signing athletes because those are players that can really do it all in a lot of different instances. Not always, but a lot of the time they can. Um, but I will be adding a lot of these guys to my board, going after guys that I know uh, we're going to need at some point down the line because we're going to be losing Devin White, Mike Lee. We're going to be losing a lot of really, really good players, so we need to work on replacing them. So I've added a lot of really, really good players to my board. Some of them, as you go down the list, are worse than others. But if I see any gems, I will let you know. I don't think I've added any athletes yet. No, we're not going to worry about that right now. Mark Barber at strong safety. 88 speed, 76 zone, 72 blocks, 97 press. Interesting. Gant looks very good as well. Speed is not quite as good, but coverage is way better. Block shed's way better. Hit power's way better. Patrick Gant, very good out of Pendleton, Oregon. We don't have a lot of bonus points on him, though. 97 speed for Nick Green. 85 man, 85 zone, 80 press. Yeah, pretty good. Ooh, plus three overall to an 81 on Jonathan Hardy. He's someone we could definitely get. Only 5'11", but super high finesse move. 92 tackle with 80 speed. 83 block shed as well. Decent zone coverage. Decent man as well. Jonathan Hardy looks to be pretty legit. Uh, there we go. First gem. Eric Campbell. 80 speed. 86 tackle. 80 hit power. Good block shed power and finesse move. Not that bad. He is very solid. 6'3", 230. This is a defensive tackle that can kind of do it all. Hunter. Hunt the quarterback. Good power, finesse, block shed, pursuit. Speed's a little on the low side. He's a defensive tackle, so it doesn't matter that much. I need to know the deal with these two tight ends. They look really solid. And I think Lorenzo Stewart is a guy we could really, really manage to get. And even though he's worse than we thought he was, he is not bad. I think Dwayne White's going to be a lot better, though. Um, yeah, he's worse as well, but yeah, he's he is better. He's a piece. James Jackson, he's almost for sure coming to Ozark State. You can just kind of get that vibe already. Plus 350. Pipeline State as well. It's in Louisiana. He's going to Louisiana school. I can guarantee you that. His speed isn't fantastic. He does have super high carrying. But good route running, good release. Honestly, great receiving everything. He's a really solid player. 
I'm not gonna buy pipeline right now because I only have three players max from the school that is the next highest to a pipeline. I don't have anything at five. I have it's like seven or twenty-one, and then like seventeen, eleven. So this is a useless skill to upgrade right now. However, royal treatment I think is going to come in handy down the line. Um, more points for recruits that visit. I think it's probably a no-brainer. Red shirting players. This is a big decision on a lot of guys. Both these quarterbacks, they're getting tagged. At running back, Keith Powell certainly is getting fran not franchise tag. He's getting the red shirt. I said tag, but you know it's a, it's a tag when you do it when you red shirt him. We're gonna have David Armstrong at running back number one. I think that's very obvious. And then the grave digger, Kurt Graves, at number three. Josh Shelton will be the number two guy. He's a speed running back, but he's not that fast. So we're fine on that. Dan Russell. We probably won't need a running back three. We might as well redshirt him, keep him for another year. Kevin Baker, obviously getting redshirt. Might as well on Tate Russell as well. Todd Hawkins at left tackle. We'll get the red shirt. At center, Gerard Owens. I told you guys that would happen. He will get the red shirt. I'll also red shirt Scott Wade. Offensive linemen do not get injured. Cut to them getting injured for me. Uh, and I haven't seen it happen. We're just going to red shirt everyone that is going to be an impact player that won't see the field. Donnell Mason plays, so wouldn't make sense to red shirt him. Brian Swain, though, he gets the red shirt. Will he perish? No way. Um, Matt Richardson, I told you guys, he's going to get red shirt. Well, I wasn't I wasn't sure on that. I think Adam Jones is going to do a pretty good job from that spot, so we're going to wait, have Matt Richardson for another year for sure. Uh, Shedrick Williams absolutely will get the red shirt. He might go back to cornerback as well at some point. And then Steve Smith, what a terrible player. So those are the players getting the red shirt. Depth chart will look like this. Chris Porter is our starting quarterback. Uh, Josh Shelton is going to go away, running back number two. David Armstrong is going to start. Tim O'Brien at fullback. At wide receiver, Tony Gates is going to be the number two. I like Omar Williams in the slot a lot. At tight end, we have Joe, uh, Joel Carter. I might call him Joel. I'll have to decide on that. Left tackle, Mike McKenzie. Left guard, Donald Hall. Center is Kevin Washington. Jeremy Douglas at right guard. Antonio Madison at right tackle. Chris Holmes at left end. Sandoval Slaughter at right end. Defensive tackles are Daryl Bradford, Albert Johnson, both preseason All-Americans. I'm surprised Sandoval Slaughter is not. Left outside linebacker is Ernest Harmon. Nick Olsen backing up. Devin White, preseason All-American and middle linebacker. Again, Nick Olsen backing up. Willie Parrish, preseason All-American. Nick Olsen backing up at right outside linebacker. Derek Higgins, preseason All-American, as is Mike Marshall. Adam Jones at the number three. Willie Mays at four. Free safety is Adam Boyd. Nick Olsen also backing up that position for some reason. No, that's going to be uh, Adam Jones who does that. And then strong safety. I would be shocked if Mike Lee is not a preseason All-American. Of course he is. What is Nick Olsen doing there? You play linebacker. Let Adam Jones do some secondary stuff. And then uh, Day is going to not punt. It's going to be Pete Riley, number 69. Kick returner. Uh, I'm going to leave it at Tony Gates. I don't want David Armstrong to be getting a ton of those. He's also an All-American, probably as a returner. Uh, and you know what? Omar Williams is. Rob Gaither is. We have a lot of All-American players. Uh, you know what? David Armstrong will be number two. And then uh, Tony Gates also will return. Hunts. All right, I guess we'll set up the custom schedule now then. Week one is going to stay open. Week two. What do we want to do there? We'll play Cal because it's kind of a fun one. Should we leave Navy on there? So I have Arkansas, Bama again. Texas State. Texas State is one I'm going to change. I think that might be the only one I change as well. Good to see Georgia Tech on there. A&M, Ole Miss, Vandy. Not a lot of available teams in this week. I'm going to leave it open and change the game to week five following LSU. Louisville could be a fun option. I'm not playing Notre Dame. We've already been there, done that. I think I'm going to put Louisville on the schedule. So our strength of schedule goes up to an A+. We honestly could give us more of a softball here. and I, I think I'm going to do that, actually. We'll put Army on there. 
So we have Army and Navy on the schedule. That's a fun schedule. Any other team I want to play more than Cal? Probably. Oh, Clemson could be really cool. Now is not the time. We're gonna we're gonna leave it at Cal. Cal's actually not bad. I want to open up. I want to open up and annihilate, kind of. USC is probably gonna be good. But we lost a player to USC. We're gonna put USC on the schedule. They're probably again gonna be pretty good, but we're gonna leave them on there. I guess that is going to be the off season, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This was a ton of fun. We landed a top 10 recruiting class in the nation. And in the next episode, you are going to see uh, our game number one, week two of the season. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Thank you.